and welcome to the X-22 Report. My name is Dave and this is episode 169 and today's date is September 21st, 2013 and the title of this episode is the Saturday Current Economic Collapse News Brief and we are going to get right into the economic collapse news. We're going to go out to Cyprus right now and there is a report that Cyprus um, will contract an additional 13% in the year 2013 to 2014. Um, they readjusted their figures and the Cyprus economy will contract this in uh, this amount and this was reported by the IMF, ECB and EC. Um, and um, what they're saying is that things aren't going as well as they thought, you know, after they robbed the people of their money and they put capital controls on for over, uh, well, it's going to be a total of a year because they said in uh, January of 2014, they're going to start releasing the capital controls, but they told their people when they uh, did the bail-in, it was only going to be two weeks, and then they said two more weeks, and that was four weeks, and here we are going in, uh, what is it, like 200 days or so, and um, because of all of this, the pressure on the banks, the balance sheets, already hurt by 30% of their loans being classified as non-performing, and it led to a sharp contraction in credit supply. Uh, mortgage lending also, also suffering from the ex effects of the recession, and they were down 3% and consumer loans by 7%. And we can understand why all this is happening. You freeze people's accounts. You don't let them take the money. You don't let new accounts to be open, and I think recently they did allow that, but you can't, all the capital controls are in effect. So why would you put money into a bank when they froze everyone's money, they stole 47% of it, and you still can't take your money out, and maybe they'll let you do this in 2014. It makes no sense, and everyone's shocked that the country is not doing as well as they thought that it was going to do after they took the money from the people, and they're seeing double-digit uh, unemployment. They're seeing small businesses go under and things are not looking good there. And the same thing is happening in Greece where they have double digit um, unemployment. The government needs uh, one, two, now three bailouts. And to get these bailouts, they have to lay off 25,000 people. And this does not make the economy better. So now they have, these countries have more debt, more interest payments less revenue. They can never get out of the mess because of the way the private Western central bankers work. And if we go back in time, the way it works is very simple. The governments borrow, let's say, a dollar from the central bank, and the central bank says, you owe me two dollars. Well, where do you get that extra dollar? It doesn't exist. So what do they have to do? They have to go back to the central bank and say, all right, give me that extra money. This way I can cover what I owe you, but then you owe more. It's a never-ending Ponzi scheme that can never, you can never win at this game. It is impossible. And this is why the countries continually dig the hole deeper and deeper and deeper. You can never get out of it. It's like a family who makes a constant $50,000 a year and now they're $100,000 in debt and they take out another $20,000 but they have the same revenue coming in. They can never pay any of that money. It's impossible. And they keep taking out more debt to cover the interest payments but their revenue stays static. It's a no-win situation and we're seeing this all over the place. And we're seeing this not just, I mean, Europe, we're, they're in a recession slash depression. Uh, Europe is at 12.1%. Most of the countries in, are in high double digit unemployment right now. And um, we're seeing that real estate is starting to plunge here in the U.S. We know um, mortgage applications are starting to plunge. And again, there is a lag of when it shows up in sales. The things that I'm telling you today are going to show up a month or two down the line. So when mortgage companies like J.P. Morgan, Citibank, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, 1-800-EAST-WEST uh, mortgage are either closing or laying off thousands of people, it's because they already know what's happening 
in the future and they're taking precautions and getting rid of the people now all those realtors and the uh, the small mortgage person who's still working at his desk making these refinance loans and these realtors going out all they see is what's happening right at this instance they don't see mortgage applications because it didn't hit them yet but when it does they're shocked what happened and we saw this back in 2007 and 2008 the same thing happened realtors were you know everything was going great but if we look back we saw mortgage applications plunging ahead of time we saw there was a subprime problem ahead of time but guess what the mo you know the everyday working person who was in the mortgage industry who's in doing real estate never saw a thing and I remember um, in 2008 I went into Bank of America and I spoke to the people there and I said oh how's Bank of America doing they're doing all right oh we're doing five we don't have any of those troubles that those other banks have because you know why they have no clue of what is really going on all they know is what they're being told and what is happening at that instance and guess what three four months down the line Bank of America one of the biggest ones that had a problem now we're seeing problems all across the US with again housing we're seeing retail stores are closing retail sales are declining and here is some more evidence now during the Christmas season the holiday season people spend money because it's the holiday season they want to buy gifts for everybody and usually you bring in a lot of workers into the retail store because you know it's going to be very busy they stock up like crazy but we're already seeing and I did this uh, a couple days ago about a report saying the holiday seasons not going to be that great okay the future they're looking down the line and they're saying mm, it looks like it's going to be a tough holiday season well target is not is hiring 18,000 fewer temporary holiday workers right now so they normally have 88,000 okay that um, work during uh, this holiday season and they're only going to have 70,000 people working now they're saying it's because you know the full-time employees they really want to get you know get this, these extra hours but when you really come down to it what it is is that they saw the back to school time period of uh, when all the children were going back to school and sales were in a decline at that time and they're seeing that this holiday season is pretty much going to be the same and they are realizing it's not as it's not going to be strong and this is why they are not hiring the amount of people that they normally hire because let me tell you if this holiday season was going to be fantastic believe me they would be hiring those 18,000 people it's not like you know there's a couple of people there that want to get extra hours this is 18,000 people that are not going to be hired for this holiday season and it goes on to say that um, other stores like um, Kohl's Macy's and other stores like that are looking into and might be reducing the amount of workers that they'll be that they'll have during this holiday season and that is a sure sign that there are problems there are things that are not going well now moving on to uh, this Navy Yard um, mass shooting we see the um, Congress they're trying to um, push the uh, gun bills that are pending in the Senate and there's already a petition that has started and when it reaches a certain number I think it's a hundred thousand signatures right now the president needs to look at it and what the military people are saying if they were allowed to uh, to have concealed carry they could have potentially stopped the shooter at Fort Hood and the Washington Navy Yard and this is a very strong case here because they are not allowed to carry their weapons inside there and think about it in all of the shootings and every place that you looked at it has always been in a gun controlled area where the perpetrator that came in knew that people did not have guns and if people did have guns in these areas they could have potentially stopped them from doing what they have done 
And what's interesting is that when President Obama first came into office, he set up this uh, We the People petition platform. And back then, I mean, there were petitions like, you know, what, what, are, what is the uh, beer recipe of the White House? And for him to look at the petition, it had to be 25,000 um, or more signatures. Since that time, and the petitions that are coming in now are completely different, they have raised the number of uh, signatures up to 100,000 um, signatures. And after 100,000, then Obama would take a look at these petitions. And I find it very interesting because there are a lot of petitions out there that have nothing to do with beer recipes, cake recipes, or how um, they cook their chicken. And um, so that is uh, very interesting that they had to raise the number of signatures because they didn't want to bother with these type of other petitions coming in. Now, the FBI is out there saying uh, those people who have conspiracy theories that agree with the, that don't agree with the 9-11 official story that are Second Amendment oriented, um, who have libertarian philosophies, that fear big brother or big government, and, um, and uh, they are also for the declarations of constitutional rights and civil liberties. These people are considered um, domestic type of terrorists, and they are put on a list. And really what they're saying is that these are, I should say, potential domestic terrorists. And um, we have to remember that FBI, DHS, TSA, FEMA, NSA, all these different agencies, they are not put into place to keep all the American people safe. They are put into place because they understand a collapse is going to happen. And if the government cannot cross the T's, dot their I's, and get things done the way they want it done, they are going to have a huge problem. Now, I've said in my other reports that they are waiting for different events to happen. And um, we're, they're waiting for a war to start. Now, they thought, you know, this chemical attack um, propaganda was going to work. They thought they were going to get the war started. They brought all the ships over. They had troops trained. They have the secret they have the underground base, CENTCOM, all set up, and everything is sitting there and waiting. And they really thought they were going to get the war started. And they also needed to get these uh, pending bills in the Senate passed. Now, it doesn't mean they're going to go out and confiscate everyone's weapon as soon as they get these laws passed, or if they get CISPA passed in the Senate, because we understand they're all pending, and they're going to have false flags um, events to pass these. They want them passed. So now moving forward, they feel they have the law behind them to confiscate the weapons if they need to do it. Because otherwise, the Second Amendment stop them. But they think these laws override the Second Amendment, which they don't. Um, but they believe they have the law behind them. And they need these to be completed before the collapse. And they need especially to get the war started. Not to cover up the collapse in a way where, oh, the collapse disappears. The cover-up is they blame it on someone else. The, co the collapse is still going to happen, but they're just going to blame it on someone else. Now, Syria is, has met the deadline to submit chemical weapons list. So they're doing their part um, and they're having this done and in accordance for what is going on um, with uh, the U.S., Russian, and Syria um, discussions on how to uh, get rid of the chemical weapons. But you have to remember, they're just going along with this, and they really don't want to go along with this. They want the war to start, and they're planning on it in many different ways. We have Netanyahu meeting with the president by, on September 30th. Um, and we see other things happening around the world. Al-Qaeda is saying that uh, they're going to attack the U.S. Um, with terrorism. We understand that they have already made the case that Al-Qaeda now is very hard to track because they've broken into lone wolf groups and they're spread, and they're already in the country, and they're spread in, inside the country, and they can't keep track of them. We understand now 
that they are trying to set up some type of false flag because they need to bring this horrific event to the front door of the American people because they saw from the polls that the American people do not care if there is a chemical attack in Syria because that's Syria's problem. Congress is not behind having a strike in the Middle East. Um, the, the, the Obama administration only had around 9 or 10 percent support for this and the American people were completely against this and they understand this now. So the next phase of this is to bring this here to America because they need to shock the people just like 9-11. And we can see that Australia's defense forces are going to uh, maintain a battle-ready status in uh, the Middle East area to back up the United States um, and England and France because they understand that this is not going to go away. And that's why Russia continually has their fleet in the Mediterranean. They are up by 11 ships now. The uh, the fleet in um, the Mediterranean for the U.S. is still there, and they are still talking about strike, strike, strike. And what has happened now in uh, Nairobi, Kenya, there was a gunman that uh, that shot and killed about 22, injured about 500, and this uh, supposedly is an Israeli-owned mall, and they are now blaming this on a they're saying that this is a terrorist attack. It was a form of Al-Qaeda, and they were aiming for uh, white people and Israelis, and they let all the Muslims out, and it, they're trying to build this up to be some type of terrorist attack, and here Al-Qaeda is out there um, creating terror. And we also see there was a report saying Al-Qaeda now is running a chemical weapons program. The United States Attorney's Office for the Eastern District of New York has said Al-Qaeda is running a chemical weapons program and may acquire weapons of mass destruction in the future. And we can see what they're trying to do here. And it could very well be since they've been using the false flag of chemical weapons for quite a while. It's not like on August 21st they just said, you know, uh, the Syrian people used chemical weapons. They've been continually saying chemical weapons, chemical weapons, chemical weapons. And now they're saying that the chemical weapons are being manufactured now by uh, Al-Qaeda. So let's put all this into perspective. The U.S., the Pentagon now, is uh, funding and training the Syrian moderates. Now, what are the Syrian moderates? Well, those are the non-Al-Qaeda uh, fighting forces on the Free Syrian Army who are fighting against Assad. The reason why they say only now the moderates is because the U.S. military came out and said, wait a minute, I thought Al-Qaeda was our enemy and they're the terrorists. Why are we going out and training them and funding them. So, of course, the U.S. government said, oh, no, 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 we're, we're just training the moderates out there. We're not doing that with the Al-Qaeda. So Al-Qaeda now is kind of broken off, and they're building uh, their ranks up, which we still know is a secret operation of the CIA, and they're the ones who created them and funding them. Al-Qaeda now has made threats in the U.S. saying they're going to attack the U.S. and use terror, terrorism, um, to get the United States back. And we see that there are a lot of, they're making the case that there's lone wolves and Al-Qaeda presence in the U.S. We understand that they're saying that Iran and Syria, the Al-Qasim and the Syrian Electronic Army, could be combining to attack the United States. So this is, I mean, I'm not making this up. This is what they're saying. So we have Al-Qaeda I mean, we have uh, the Syrian Electronic Army and al Qasim combining to attack the financial institutions. We have Al-Qaeda making announcements that there will be terrorism in the U.S. We have a report now from the United States uh, Attorney's Office saying that Al-Qaeda is running a chemical weapons program. And this is a, a former FBI Assistant Director John Miller um, documented and obtained um, uh, information that yes, Al-Qaeda um, 
are working to develop chemical weapons. So what do we what do we have here? We have an attack on the financial institutions by both Iran and Syria. We have Al Qaeda saying that they're going to attack the US and we have Al Qaeda developing chemical weapons. And when people in the US hear Al Qaeda, the first thing that comes to their mind is terrorism. So, what are they planning here? We've just seen an Al Qaeda type of terrorism act in an Israeli owned mall. And they let the Muslims go and they were shooting at white people and Israelis. This is what the report is saying. So, we, from all of this, we can expect something to happen. But what else do we know? We also know that the FBI is putting out many, many warnings that the financial and the stock market are will be under some type of cyber threat um, throughout this fall and early winter. We also understand that there is a power drill simulation going on that will simulate cyber attacks, uh, bombs, that could affect the power grid or the water supply. They've been telling us about cyber attacks for over a year and a half, up to two years now, and they are building the case for this. So we can see how all these pieces are starting to fit together. And this FBI agent, Austin Berglass, hope, I guess I said his, uh, his, na his last name correctly, was interviewed, and some of the questions were very interesting. And one of the questions are, what's the one emerging cyber threat on your radar that is the most alarming? What keeps you up? Destructive capabilities of certain uh, nation states and the, the ability for these nation states to hit and destroy the financial industry. The ability for these nation states to hit the power grid and the infrastructure. The other question, given the growth of cyber attacks and crimes hitting major US banks and Wall Street firms, how worried should average Americans be about the safety of their savings and investment accounts? And he went on to say, as long as these major financial institutions are making customers whole so that if someone gets their bank account compromised and the company is accepting losses and making them whole, that would come for me as a consumer. But that's not to say that down the line, maybe banks are going to, ter to determine that if it's the end user's responsibility, they click on some sort of malware or fall victim to a phishing scheme, or if the banks get hit by a major cyber attack, that the banks are not held responsible, that the individuals will be responsible. And if you look at a lot of the terms of service agreements, um, a lot of them now say that they are not responsible for cyber attacks, malware, um, and things of this, riots, um, war, um, they are not responsible, and you cannot hold uh, the CEO or officers or representative of the, of the banks responsible um, if you lose money in the banks. And he also went on to say that we have had lots of instances where DDoS attacks were used to penetrate banking systems by shutting down the online banking platforms and then doing ejections into the network and gaining access to people's accounts, to, um, to uh, the main databases of where, where their accounts are held, and they are able to manipulate the different uh, numbers in the bank account. And we can see this by many different types of malware and um, virus viruses that they can be held dormant in these banking systems, in Wall Street, in the financial institutions, and be called upon when needed. And that brings me to the point where we have seen many, many glitches in NASDAQ in the treasury system when when Goldman Sachs was trying to purchase treasuries. We've seen it in Amazon. We've seen it in Netflix, Vine. We've seen it in 
many different areas. Banks have been brought down by cyber attacks. I believe what's going to happen, because they're trying to make this case, that during this false flag event by Al-Qaeda, um, they will also bring in some type of cyber attack that will infiltrate the Wall Street or the banks, and this will allow uh, the government to cover up, the Fed to cover up what's going to happen with this collapse. Now, I've been talking a lot about this, and I went on yesterday saying about, you know, that the Fed pretty much controls the entire market. It's an illusion. They make up the numbers they want, the, what they want them to be. And, you know, the Bank of International Settlement um, is saying that the current situation on the financial markets is worse than before the Lehman bankruptcy. Central banks have lost control of the debt tide, and um, it's going to end very, very badly. All previous imbalances are still there. Total public and private debt is 30 percentage points as measured by the gross national product of developed countries. And we have a whole new problem with bubbles in emerging markets, which will end in a boom-bust cycle. Now, you have to remember that the Fed right now is telling us that there are no bubbles. They told us this, they told us this prior to 2007, 2008. The bank of international settlements are telling everyone that there is bubbles forming and we know that there are because we know what is happening. We understand the Fed is pumping up the stock market. The Fed is pumping up housing. They're manipulating GDP, inflation, unemployment to mask and keep the illusion going so no one is the wiser. I've said this before that the Fed, central bankers, the powers that be, will not let gold rise. They will continually push it down. Every time you see it make a dramatic upswing, you'll see it make a dramatic downswing. There, all, all these people are talking about fundamentals and all of these different things. Yes, in an open, free market, that would work perfectly. This is a controlled illusionary market. It is not real. All that stuff that's talking about when they keep saying gold is going to swing up now, gold is going to, now it's going to make gains, and they can't understand it. Wait, why did gold go all the way down? What, what's going on here? They are doing this on purpose. Why is the stock market rising to all new, all-time new highs? Does it make sense to anybody? Of course it doesn't. All of these things are being done by the Fed. They are creating this illusion. They are buying all these treasury bonds because there are no buyers when the sellers want to get rid of them. So they are purchasing them. They are manipulating the numbers as, as much as they possibly can. And they continue to manipulate them because when, when it doesn't fit what they need, they manipulate them again. Just like we saw with GDP. I mean, they're going all the way back to 1929 and recalculating everything. So it shows up as a positive GDP because they have to keep the illusion going. They're not waiting for a certain market benchmark to hit so they can taper. If so, their manipulated numbers, they would have done that already, but they already know. If they taper, it's done. We're screwed. That's it. But to the American people and to all the mouthpieces on the corporate media, this is what they're feeding everyone. They are waiting for this huge event to hit. And then you will see things happen. They need to get the war started to cover up. It makes it a lot easier for them to blame it on another country. Because this implosion is going to be nothing that we have ever seen. The economy is going to crash so hard... You thought it was bad last time. You thought losing 38% of people's wealth was bad last time. This time, that's going to look like it is nothing. And especially with, I mean, this is the end part. This is, this is the part where there's no like, oh, let's, let's create jobs again. There are no jobs. Oh, let's 
print more money to help out the banks again. No, the banks against it's now there are no bailouts. There are only bail ins. Uh, the 2012 uh, FDIC Bank of England document under the Frank uh, Dodd Act, no more bail in, no more bailouts. It's only bail ins. So you know exactly what they're planning. If you're still not co convinced, keep doing what you're doing, you know, and you know, listen to the corporate media. Just like everyone did in 2007, 2008, where they told you, that, oh, there's no recession, everything's going to be fine, don't worry about it, keep buying houses, and we saw how well all of that worked out. They are building this up, and they have no escape, so all they can do is print or create money. This is not going to end well. It is not going to be uh, good for anyone. And this is why you see DHS, TSA, FEMA camps. Um, they are not, I mean, I hear people, and this is a very confusing, they're not trying to destroy the dollar. They already know it is. Listen, everyone, thanks a lot for listening. Be well, be safe, and especially be prepared. Thanks a lot.